Thank you for listening to the Mutual Audio Network. Please don't turn that dial. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, a faux fiction audio production published by Not a Pipe Publishing. Super Guy by Kurt Klopton. Super Guy, the generic alternative. Less superhero hype, same superhero quality. Chapter 12. The press conference introducing Super Guy was held on the front steps of the city government's main office building. The large platform used in all such events had been erected early that morning in its usual location, broken up halfway to the top by a level expanse that echoed the street and the landing above in front of the main doors. The platform was erected on the bottom few steps of the upper set of stairs, so the press and any spectators could stand on a level section in the middle. This created a viewing angle that made certain the columns of the building would be visible behind the speaker, especially in photos and news footage, which was judged to be very governmental and impressive looking. Today, the crowd filled the level middle area in addition to the lower steps and even stretched out into the street. Many of them were members of the press, both news and entertainment in this case, but there were a large number of regular citizens as well. Those regular citizens did include some rather, surprisingly, zealous fans of the as-yet-unannounced superhero. There were always leaks concerning these events, so it wasn't exactly a secret what was going on. But a couple of people had been industrious enough to print up Super Guy t-shirts and hats and were selling them on the fringes of the crowd. The street had been blocked off, keeping it empty, except for several news fans and a few police cruisers. It was a slightly cool early fall morning, but the sun was out and it had the promise of becoming a warm, almost throwback summer day. Oliver, Roger, and Emma were enjoying that weather now as they stood on the landing at the top of the steps, positioned behind one of the huge columns lining the front of the building. The police chief and his contingent were there too, but keeping their distance while only occasionally glancing with disdain in Oliver's direction. Everyone was waiting for the mayor to come down from his office to start the show. Oliver and Roger were occupying themselves by scanning the crowd below for faces of various pseudo-famous local news people. Roger had a bit of a thing for one of the Channel 7 reporters who often covered city government events. So if we see her, maybe you could grant her a one-on-one interview. Yeah, and and what would that do for you? Asked Oliver, still scanning the crowd. He was a little bugged by something he couldn't quite place and wondered if he was getting nervous about being in front of the public. He thought that sort of thing wasn't supposed to happen, being somehow covered by the super serum. His expectations of what all the super serum would cover was getting pretty high. Well, I'd be there too, of course. You'd introduce me. Hmm, maybe I should even have some kind of official capacity. Special liaison to Channel 7's Roberta Foxdale sounds good to me. Sorry, but he can't do interviews yet. Not until after he gets back from the official hero orientation in D.C. That's what the mayor's office said, and maybe it's somewhere in all those pages and pages of information on this position. I don't know. Anyway, Roger, you strike me more as a Susie Shaw from Channel 4 kind of guy. Susie Shaw? No way. Well, not no way. There's probably a way. But if I had to choose my favorite, Roberta's my girl. Emma was about to say more, but stopped when the front door opened and the mayor appeared, followed by the deputy mayor and a pack of aides. The mayor, a man of average height and slightly above average weight, walked up to the police chief, shook his hand, and exchanged a few words. After a moment, he patted the police chief on the arm and walked over to where Oliver, Roger, and Emma waited. 
Most of the aides followed while the deputy mayor, a tall, slim man with a beak-like nose, stayed behind with the police chief. Mr. Olson, said the mayor with a very practiced smile. He had dark hair with some gray mixed in at the temples and slight wrinkles around his eyes. Shaking Oliver's hand, the mayor continued to talk while throwing his smile around at Roger and Emma also. At least I'm assuming you, Mr. Olsen, considering the costume, but I suppose I could be wrong. I have seen stranger things on the street in this city. <laughs> no, you're not wrong, sir. Well, it's good to finally meet you, super guy. It sounds a bit strange. May I call you Oliver? The mayor said, draping one arm over Oliver's shoulders. Which was a little awkward for a five foot eleven man to do to a six foot seven man, but he managed to pull it off, and guiding him a short distance away from the rest of the group. Look, I'm damn glad to have you on our team. I know the police chief isn't too happy about this, they never are, but it's good for the city of Milwaukee, and eventually he'll see that. We have to put the city first, and that's what's important. I have every confidence in you. The mayor stopped and faced Oliver when he spoke that last sentence, punctuating it by tapping him on the chest. He threw his other arm over Oliver's shoulders and guided him back towards the group. Look, you just do what you were made to do. You know, be heroic. Do that and everything will be great. The mayor slowed their pace slightly and lowered his voice. But if you screw something up, you know how to keep your distance from my office, right? We don't want anyone else in this position. We want you. But if that doesn't work, then things have to be done. You understand, I'm sure. Nothing to worry about. The mayor patted Oliver on the chest one more time as they got back to the rest of the group. Okay, let's get this thing done. I'm going to say a few words, introduce Oliver here, and then he'll say something. An aide handed Oliver a couple of note cards with remarks already written for him, which were short, but very strong in their praise of the mayor. And then there'll be some pictures. Okay, let's have some fun. With that... The mayor led the group down the steps to the platform. Once everyone was in place, which meant the deputy mayor, the police chief, and Oliver were all side by side just off to the right of the podium with everyone else behind them, the mayor stepped up to the microphones. After about ten minutes, it became obvious to Oliver that the mayor's definition of a few words was somewhat different than anybody else's on the planet who wasn't a politician so he scanned the crowd again to see if Roger's favorite reporter, Roberta Foxdale, was present. He spotted her in the front of the crowd just a couple of people away from Susie Shaw. Oliver figured he was probably more of a Susie Shaw kind of guy and started to consider the whole Superman Lois Lane angle. As Miss Shaw was listening to the mayor's comments, she looked his way and he thought about giving her a little smile when they made eye contact. Except her eyes never got there. She seemed to be looking a bit lower, which made Oliver realize he had relinquished Emma's briefcase and was now standing there with nothing in front of himself. He quickly checked Roberta Foxdale to find she was looking at the same thing, as well as the majority of the rest of the people in those first couple of rows. At first, Oliver found it hard to believe people could be so shameless. But then he realized it was kind of unavoidable. Since he was elevated a few feet above the platform, his groin happened to be right at their eye level. He quickly dropped his hands and fanned out his two note cards to cover as much as possible. A moment or two later, something strange happened. Oliver started to move without thinking, except for the fact he knew exactly what he was doing and why. It was almost as if there were two of him, one asking why he was doing something, and the other giving the answers, which then made perfect sense, as if he already knew what those answers were. Oliver stepped out in front of the police chief, dropped his note cards, and intercepted a cylindrical object that had been thrown from the crowd. He knew it was a bomb. He had seen the man who threw it. In fact, he had spotted him in the crowd earlier before the mayor's arrival, and had been keeping an eye on him the whole time. At least, Oliver realized that now. He had kept track of the man as he had worked his way forward through the crowd and into a position close to the platform. And all the while, the man kept a constant eye on the closest police officers working security for the event. Then Oliver saw the man pull the bomb from his jacket, activate it, and throw it at the stage. 
that same bomb which Oliver now caught with both hands and guided into his stomach as he bent over and dropped to the ground, curling around the device as completely as he could. When it exploded, as he knew it would, Oliver found himself flying upward into the air, flipping over and dropping perfectly back down into the hole that had been created in the platform where he had been. You have been listening to Super Guy by Kurt Klopton, a faux fiction audio production published by Not A Pipe Publishing. Look for the sequel to Super Guy coming this September. This recording, characters, and the situations within are the property of their author and creator and protected by copyright. If you wish to listen to more episodes in advance, search patreon.com, then faux fiction audio, and sign up to be a monthly patron. Or stay tuned until the next week for your free episode. We will see you then. This is Jack Ward from the Mutual Audio Network. And on behalf of our United Artists of Audio, we're here hoping you great riches of stories and scripts during Nadsrim 2023. 